Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about an exciting opportunity to join the Wizards of the Coast Snitching team. Uh, this team is very impressive. Uh, you are a delver of secrets. You can tell from just reading the appeal that you're not going to get paid very much. There's going to be no benefits and should anything go wrong, you will be run over by an ice cream truck. You clearly are a volunteer and actually, surprisingly, I found the job, so I made fun of it, but then I found out, wait a second, this is an actual job. They're really hiring snitches and your job is to go on social media, private Facebook groups like Magic for Bad and screenshot people making funny memes. I, you, you think I'm joking here, but I am absolutely not joking. They are expecting, and they're actually demanding a lot of uh, interesting work requirements. So here's Wizards of the Coast. You will be a associate investigator temporarily. Sounds like a volunteer job to me. What is this role all about? Performs investigation duties within a busy and dynamic investigations team. Responsibilities include report writing, investigation, I'm, I'm glad that's included, ongoing monitoring for retail program abuse, player behavior, which would be social media, and other potential issues. Must, must be flexible to work shifts on a 24-7 basis. Okay, let me, let me put it this way for you. The card quality is bad. The card ink is bad. The card, card stock is bad. Master 25 was bad. Iconic Masters was even worse. And, you know, let's funnel all of our resources to make, 20, make sure that 24-7, when anyone says something mean on Twitter or YouTube, that we can investigate them right away. It gets very good at the end, so just stay with me towards the end. I'm going to show you an email. Not to me. Somehow I'm untouchable, unvanable. Wink, wink. But to someone who has a much smaller channel and a much less smaller, I guess, I don't want to say that because it doesn't matter to me, but in imprint on the game. So player behavior and other potential issues to perform job functions under immediate supervision. So this is a job title. You're an associate investigator, part-time, 24-7. And here are the techniques you will be using. We can make use of some techniques to solve these situations, but remember that during an investigation, we don't follow a fixed schedule, they're 24-7. The investigation should flow naturally. It is not a task list. So pretty much, it's whatever we want it to be. You're guilty as long as we find you guilty. If you're a pro player, you can't possibly be guilty, right? When interviewing the players involved in an investigation, their reactions are of critical importance. We'll, we will be looking for changes in voice, tone, gesture, and other types of body language. All right, let me, let me put this way for you. These are people, uh, magic judges, I assume most of them were magic judges because who else would volunteer for this job? Their guideline is to make very vague observations with no training on voice, tone, gesture, and body, other body language. What the blank? That's how they're making decisions. So when they're making decisions on social media, they don't, they base it on the tone of the tweet, the gestures made, I guess the memes included, and the body language of the tweet. Like, this is pretty bad. Uh, it is. Pre I get how maybe you could detect someone's lying, but liars are very good. They have practiced many times, and their body language probably is going to convince you that they're not lying. So here's their philosophy. This is when we investigate, period. Sometimes investigation will lead to a simple misunderstanding or to an honest mistake. In those cases, we apply the appropriate fix and issue the appropriate penalty for blah, blah, blah. When we investigate an issue of penalty, we pursue providing players a good customer service. 
We want the best outcome for the tournament, although we don't want players to feel persecuted. Oh, that's interesting. Huh. They don't want people to feel like the company's coming after them. CMTG headquarters banned for life. So all this stuff is just very super like, okay, how do we know someone's guilty based on how you feel? Do you feel this person is guilty? Oh, what, their tone changed? Clearly lying. So these people with no training in, I guess, detective or PI work are suddenly made PIs, and made to judge, you know, the tone and the gestures and the change. And I mean, you got to be kidding me, right? This is the quality of an investigation team. They're supposed to work 24-7 for no money based on tone, and they're supposed to make decisions based on tones, not content or context tones. Are there worse problems right now that we couldn't invest? The argument a lot of you will make on this video is, hey, this is two different scenarios, right? Which of the coach can do a good product and they can make sure the card stock is great and the card print is good, and they can work on Magic Online and they work on Magic Arena and they can do all this stuff at one time because it's a different team. No, that's not how teams work. You have a set amount of resources. And if you put more resources to your investigation team and you're spending more money, your investigation team is not making money. In fact, they are losing you money because they're banning people for life. Uh, MTG headquarters is probably more willing to buy Magic products had he not been banned for life. And he is a big spender. Like I spend quite a bit too and they're threatening to ban me for life. I'll get into a video on Monday of why they can't ban me. Like it's very clear I have been, I would say, misbehaving and aggravating them. I mentioned Jacob, I mentioned Frank. Uh, this, You might ask why this particular set of videos like for the last week, week and a half were very aggressive. Because I wanted to see if they would ban me, or if they had the guts to ban me and they do not. Which I'm not surprised at. It's, all, it's like a company run by Jacobs, right? Uh, Jacobs are running this company and their feelings are hurt, but they're too, they're too emotional to like actually want to go at it. So it's a dude who pokes you in the, st he sits behind you in a bus, he pokes you and pokes you and pokes you and kicks your seat. Then you punch him in the face, which I should be banned for just even saying that. And then he cries and he doesn't stand up for himself. That is what Wizards of Coast is. I mean... I can only take so many pokes before I start biting back. Are there issues when your biggest YouTuber and the person in your pocket is telling you that the Masters is a C product for your 25th anniversary, saying that your product sucks and he's being paid? What? I mean, that Card Kingdom cannot like a C grade. They got to sell this product, right? And when you see that multiple people are finding that packs are very similar, and then, you know, Reddit deletes all of this, right? They delete stuff like this. And then when someone says, oh, these two booster packs are, or these two booster boxes are totally widely different. Yeah, no blank, you idiot. Like the majority of these packs are going to be, boxes will be different from each other. It's the ones that are the same that's interesting because that tells you it can be mapped. We're not talking about, okay, if I bought a booster box from this store and then I bought another boost box from the store. Am I going to get identical boxes? The odds are no. But the fact that you do have boxes that are identical, even at a very low percentage, tells you that, hey, something is going wrong with the printing. The randomization is not there. Otherwise, this stuff wouldn't happen. So instead of doing all this, um, instead of hiring someone to randomize cards or a program, maybe paying $5 a month for a program that would help you randomize cards. Uh, instead of hiring a print expert or a card quality, quality assurance expert, maybe a better developer for Magic Online, maybe a better developer for Magic Arena, we're going to funnel all of our money into this investigation unit, which does not deal with money. And here's what they're doing, okay? Let me read you this email from a subscriber. We are emailing you regarding your conduct on social media during the dates of November 15th till February 2nd. So a very large amount. 
and this conduct was recently emailed. This was e uh, on the 15th. It's actually today, oh, the 15th of March, so Thursday. Your DCI membership has been updated to reflect an official warning regarding posts made on Twitter and videos made on YouTube after a report was filed and reviewed by the investigation committee. It was deemed that your actions have been viewed as unsportsmanlike, unsporting conduct towards other players, judges, employees of the game. This will not affect your ability to participate in any magic events as a player. This will not affect your ability to spend money with us. Volunteer, give us your free time. Staff or judge, your name will not appear on the DCI suspended member list. Any invitations to premier events you have at this time or may obtain or not affected. However, continue conduct of this matter will, could ultimately lead to more serious actions being taken. To appeal this decision, which is really a warning. All right, so this is what the investigation community is doing. Instead of making you know quality assurance, making sure our card quality is good and all random and the product does not receive a C from your biggest uh, YouTube content creator. We are spending all of our resources sending these emails one by one by one with a very vague two month period of time where you could have said bad stuff and giving you an official warning that doesn't actually affect anything that happened. Like, is this like unbelievable or what? Like that people are getting official warnings telling them this is a warning and then you can appeal your warning. I, I would love everyone who gets this to just appeal it and just drag them out. Make, make sure that they hire more of these 24 seven dudes. I, I clearly that's what they need to be doing. They need to hire as many people to work 24 seven to investigate social media as possible because that will somehow increase the sales numbers by banning people for life, we're surely going to increase sales by making product, poor, poor product. We are surely going to increase sales and you know our player base is going to grow uh, and the larger our player base grows, the more investigators we can hire. This is like so backwards, it's not even like funny, it's just sad. And yes, I know I'm attacking the one, P the Look, if I don't get banned for this, I don't know what else I could get banned for because I'm going after the committee of investigations who issued these bans. Because I think it's ridiculous that we're funneling all this money to them or which of the coast is funneling all this money, which they got from the customers to investigate the customers. This is like a real job. Like I don't, this is a, this is a paid job. So it's already more valuable than the judge program, the entire judge program. They're saying that these people deserve to be paid and judges do not. There you go. Anyway, bye.